Well, this has certainly gotten more interesting than we were initially expecting. So global oil production is actually already down to just above 80 million barrels per day and is now expected to even possibly dip into the 70s uh, by July and uh, linger in there over the course of July before coming back up and uh, climbing slowly back up towards normal starting in August or so. Now, welcome back, everybody, to the Quick Carbon Podcast, now episode 31 or 32. I'm not sure. My, my brain stopped functioning. But anyways, as always... Uh, thank you to everybody who supported me through PayPal or Patreon during the last month. Uh, if anyone wants to again, or if anybody new wants to support me or help me out for the first time, PayPal and Patreon links are both in the description below and in the uh, top comment, the pinned comment in the comment section. Now dealing with this, uh, as you may remember, before all of this started... Uh, back at uh, the turn of the new year, global oil demand and global oil production were both at about 102 million barrels a day. And uh, during all the quarantines and the shutdowns and everything, at the absolute low point, global oil demand dropped all the way down to 72 million barrels per day. And since then, it has climbed back up. And uh, as of now, it is around 86-ish million barrels a day and should most likely be hitting 90 by the end of the month, uh, unless, you know, anything sudden happens. And thus, there is now a supply-demand gap, as uh, global oil production is now less than where demand is at, as global oil production is uh, down towards 80, due to additional production losses outside of the initial expected production losses from all of the... Uh, drilling rigs shutting down all over the place, and also uh, due to additional willing production shut down by several nations uh, that were not originally part of the the first draft of sorts of the OPEC Plus deal. Like recently, uh, in the last couple of weeks, Canada uh, said they were going to shut down about half a million barrels per day of production. Norway, a few weeks back, said they were going to shut down about uh, a quarter of a million and now, most recently, Iraq, a few days ago, originally they uh, had said they were just going to hold their production steady at 4.5 million barrels a day instead of uh, increasing it like they've been wanting to for the last several years. Uh, during all the previous OPEC cut agreements over the last few years, uh, their, their part of the deal was to just hold at 4.5 and not increase. However, now, after, you know, how low the uh, the oil prices had gotten and the fact that uh, they're not back up to where they would really like them to be yet, Iraq actually agreed uh, to reduce some of its production this time around. And so they're actually going to cut uh, about a million barrels a day. So they're going to be dropping themselves from 4.5 down to 3.5 million barrels per day. Saudi Arabia is going to be cutting an additional million barrels per day of their production uh, further than what they initially agreed to. And again, as I said, uh, production losses have uh, started stacking up from numerous places around the globe, like uh, Brazil, for example, uh, so far over the past few months since all this began, has lost about 300,000 or a bit more than that. Australia is getting close to having lost about 100,000. The U.S. is still decreasing now down from 13 down to 11.2 million barrels per day and still dropping as of the moment. And several other production losses uh, elsewhere in smaller amounts across the world that uh, collectively tally up. So the drop in production since everything began, both planned intentional production uh, cuts and production losses are both now higher than uh, they were initially foreseen as going to be. So actually for the remainder of this year, for the remaining six and a half or six and two thirds months or so, it's expected there's, there's going to remain to varying degrees a supply-demand deficit, which again will bring about the effects they want because to fill that deficit, obviously countries will uh, start pulling oil out of their inventories, uh, which had been really swelling up during the oversupply period. And as the inventory numbers get drawn down, 
the prices get pushed up. Now, in terms specifically of the rig count losses, uh, regarding the U.S. over this past week, the U.S. rig count continued dropping further, down from 301 down to 284 actively drilling rigs. Now nearly down by three quarters from uh, the 800 or so it was at before the whole virus scenario began. And Canada's rig counts uh, not dropping further, actually gaining one, coming in at 21 actively drilling rigs, but still, you know, a massive drop from the 133 active rigs they had before all of this began. Individual states within the U.S. coming out as Texas now down to only 115 actively drilling rigs compared to the roughly 400 that Texas had just a few months ago. New Mexico now down by half, down to 58 actively drilling rigs compared to the 110, 120 that it had several months ago. Oklahoma all the way down at 11 from uh, its height of 120. Louisiana had also uh, been up near Oklahoma's range, uh, but Louisiana had also been losing rigs before this. Uh, Louisiana now down to 34. Pennsylvania had been in the lower 30s, upper 20s, and is now down to 20. West Virginia had been in the upper teens and is now down to 8. Ohio had, for the longest time, been holding at 15. Then, once all this started, it dropped down to 9 and basically has held 9 ever since, except for last week when it dropped down to 8, but now it bumped back up to 9 rigs again. North Dakota, for years, uh, for most of the later part of the 2010s, had held in the 50s as uh, the industry kept the Bakken shale clinging to life. Now North Dakota's recount is all the way down to 12. California is normally always basically at 15, trying to keep the Midway Sunset Fields alive, uh, now is all the way down to four. Now worldwide, the international rig count, uh, excluding the U.S. and Canada, so this is everywhere else. Worldwide, before all the virus stuff started, the global rig count, uh, excluding the U.S. and Canada, was at about 1,100 actively drilling rigs. Then it dropped down to 1,059. Then last month, it dropped down to 915. And by the start of this month, June, it was down to 805. And amongst the individual regions, Latin America has declined over the past month further from 89 down to only 62 actively drilling rigs. Africa lost about 40% over the past month from 103 actively drilling rigs down to only 61. The Middle East, which includes uh, the Central Asian republics, remember, like Kazakhstan and Turkmenistan and that. The Middle East uh, dropped a bit from 420 down to 375 actively drilling rigs. Europe uh, dropped only by one over the course of May, from 112 down to 111. And Asia, which does also include the Oceania region, so everything down through Indonesia and Australia and the islands and all that. Asia dropped uh, Asia dropped by a bit, but not too much, uh, dropping over the course of May from 192 down to 175 rigs. And oil prices, as of the moment, uh, are in the upper 30s. They had gotten right up to just under $40 a barrel, but uh, then they fell back down by a dollar or two over the last uh, 24 hours or so. And touching on some metals uh, to round everything out for this one, Global gold inventories continue climbing. As uh, we keep repeatedly saying, global gold demand is down, primarily from jewelry demand uh, being down. The increases have uh, slowed down. They have gotten smaller over the last week or so, but still gold inventories are now up over 29 million ounces in storage. Heading towards their uh, previous height from years ago of uh, 40 million ounces in storage, so we'll see if they actually get to that and break that. Gold prices are currently at around $1,710 per ounce. Global silver inventories had been uh, continually decreasing, then they went up a bit again last week, then they resumed decreasing. 
Now, over these two days, they bumped up a little bit again, back up to 314 million ounces in storage. And silver price is currently at about $17.80 per ounce. Platinum inventory is still at 159,000 ounces in storage, with platinum prices just under $850 per ounce. Palladium inventory is still at about 49,000 ounces in storage, with uh, palladium prices at just under $2,000 per ounce. Global aluminum inventories uh, still climbing a bit, uh, but as industry and stuff and everything is starting to pick back up, uh, they're climbing the building of inventories. It's stopping, but they're still climbing up by a little bit. And uh, as of today, are up to 1.52 million tons in storage, with aluminum prices a bit under $1,600 per ton. Lead inventories uh, are at about the same, but a little bit higher than they were last week, now at 76,000 tons in storage, with lead prices at about $1,750 per ton. Nickel inventories uh, decreased a little bit, down from 234 to 232,000 tons in storage. And nickel prices climbed uh, back up and are now uh, just a bit under $13,000 per ton. Zinc demand is back in full for the most part, and zinc inventories uh, declined over the course of the past week or so from 107,000 down to 95,000 tons in storage. While zinc prices are hovering at around $2,000 per ton, tin inventories are getting drawn down and are now down to the bottom threshold of uh, their normal fluctuation range, and they are right at 5,000 tons in storage. And as the inventories uh, kept dropping towards 5K, tin prices uh, continued climbing up and are now back up to just under $17,000 per ton. Iron prices uh, actually went back up into triple digits again and are just above $100 per ton at the moment. Rhodium prices, after uh, their tumble during this whole mess, uh, from their super record height of $13,000 per ounce, they tumbled as, you know, all the way way back down below 7000 I believe. And they were climbing back up. Uh, but now they've kind of stalled and are hanging out at around $8,500 per ounce. So that's about it uh, for this one. So thanks everybody for sticking around and listening. Like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you haven't already, blah, blah, blah. If you want to help me, anything's appreciated. PayPal, Patreon, both links are down there. But no matter what, may God bless you all. I will see you all around next time.